How to write a nutrition program without a scale. In this video, we talk about non-scale ways to measure weight loss progress. This is important because clients are often anxious in the beginning and they want to see results immediately. And when they focus on the scale, they can be very easily frustrated because the scale goes up and down and it takes some time to see trends. In this video, we talk about early signs that are promising for the client and for you that the program is working and also long-term strategies to measure progress so we can direct our clients away from the scale and to measures that don't mess so much with their head. Hi, my name is Coach Robin. On my channel, I talk about motivation interviewing, how to structure your coaching, how to implement the best coaching practices so you create a better service and have better retention and overall grow your business. If you want more videos just like this, make sure that you subscribe. When you're starting a weight loss journey, one of the first questions is, is it working? How do I know that I'm losing weight? And one of the standard ways to measure weight loss is with a scale. But the issue is it often takes some time before we can see trends. And also the scale has this tendency of going up and down based on the time of the month, what they ate, water retention, stress, and many, many other issues. So clients that are a little bit sensible to the, to the scale often then feel very frustrated when the scale is not moving. And even more experienced dieters have this little sting when the, when the scale is not immediately dropping when they're starting a weight loss journey. So one important way to overcome this issue is to look for first signs that are not related to the scale that indicate progress. So you can actually tick off a bunch of checkboxes and see, hey, this is improving, this is improving, this is improving, this is improving, and all of this is a sign that you're making progress. And that combines with actual weight loss gives a lot of clarity so you don't have just the scale, you have a bunch of different indicators that say, yeah, I'm making progress. And another benefit of having non-scale victories or not using a scale to measure weight loss progress is the calmness. A lot of people attach a lot of value to a number on the scale. And if the, if the scale doesn't move in the right direction, they feel shame, they feel frustrated, they want to give up, then a lot of difficult thoughts come up. So if we're able to redirect their focus to something else that's a little bit more stable, that's a little bit more positive, that's not attached with so to, to so much value, then our clients are emotionally calmer, they experience less tension, and in this way are more able to actually follow the program, be more patient, be more calm, and see the bigger picture instead of focusing on the scale. And in this video I will talk about ways to measure progress and if you want to see a video on how to actually write a nutrition program I have a link in the description below and I also will share a non-scale progress checking sheet and a worksheet to create your own non-scale progress tracking indicators and all of that you will find together with my coaching preparation kit in the description below. In this video, we will distinguish between two different types of goals. We have behavior goals. These are really the things that our clients can do. That's like measuring how much food you eat or making a salad, preparing your food, going to the gym, making an effort. So what, something that they can do that they have complete control over. And these steps then lead to certain outcomes. The outcomes don't have any value. They are just there, they're information. And then we attach some, some sort of order to it by having a goal. So for example, losing weight is positive, gaining weight is negative. If losing weight is the goal, if the opposite, you know. So we have to focus on behavior goals. So track your food every day or eat a lean protein with every meal or drink water every hour. So these are behavior goals and our 
our aim is then with the nutrition program that we reach a certain outcome. And we will talk about different measures for both. How can we measure behavior goals and how can we measure outcome goals? So let's talk about behavior goals. Behavior goals have to be something that the client can control. So they practice 10 squats every day. That's something they can control. They cannot control how much weight they lose. No matter how much they're thinking about it, how much they're tensioning, they can't control how much weight they lose. But they can control how much protein they put on their plate. So that's the first part of a behavioral goal. The next part is, the idea is it pulls them towards something. So instead of saying, don't eat sugar, because that's, that's not something that pulls them towards something. Instead, you can say, make smart carb choices or eat whole grains. It pulls them towards something. It makes clear what to do instead of what not to do. The next part is then it focuses on execution instead of performance. A good example is sleep. A performance goal would be have eight hours of sleep. That's often not something that a client can control. Instead, you can focus on cool, make the bedroom cooler. Don't put your phone next to your, to your head. Keep electronics outside of the bedroom. This is the execution and then all, oh, sometimes it's also a mastery. So do it every day. Do it for longer. And the last part that people often miss is the part of meaningfulness. Does the client understand why they should not have their phone on next to their bed? Why is the sleep important for the weight loss? So these four factors are important to create a behavior goal. And if you want to get 100 different behavior goals to overcome the top 10 nutritional challenges and also 40 ways to eat better consistently, then you can check out my coaching preparation kit in the description below. Even though we talk about behavior goals, we have to think about goals in a sequence. So when you set a behavior goal, it's one at a time. The reason is often clients cannot handle more and you know it from your own life. If you try to set four, two, three, four different goals, you feel overwhelmed and you don't do anything. And it's also very frustrating. So behavior goals are a sequence of goals. So they focus first on eating slowly. So they reduce the energy intake. Then they focus, for example, on eating until satisfied. Another way to reduce the energy intake. Then they eat lean protein, a way to be fuller for longer. This is a sequence of small goals that they can control. And if we create a reasonable and science support supported program or a series of these goals, then we lead our clients to the goal that they're after. So this is just to clarify Behavioral goals are a sequence of goals and it's just one goal at the time. How could these behavior goals look like? For example, eat slowly with every meal, de-stress for five minutes after work, work out for 30 minutes, eat until satisfied, ask yourself why you're eating. This is what they can control. It pulls them to something. It focuses on execution and maybe mastery and it's meaningful to them. And you can add these goals to your check-in form, for example, to make sure during your coaching session, you can talk about it and see, did they, were they able to execute it consistently? What were struggles? What went well? What didn't went well? And how to do that? I talk about this in how to do online coaching check-ins, and you can find it in the description below and also in the card here. I want to emphasize this one more time. Behavior goals are the necessary steps to reach a goal. So we have to create a program that leads to an energy deficit, for example. 
and our clients have to behave, how to have to act in a certain way to reach an energy deficit. For example, they eat slowly or they track their macros. They eat more salad than energy dense foods like fat. These are behaviors, something that they can do. And then we observe the outcome. The outcome itself is of no value, it's just information. But then we judge the outcome compared to the goal. And if we are moving closer to the goal, that's progress. So it means behavior goals consistently can lead to progress. Why am I highlighting this? The important part is when you're talking with your client in an online discussion, for example, or in a video or in person, make sure that you highlight the importance of their behavior goals. So when they're consistent with eating slowly, give them a high five, let them know they're doing well. Because in this way, you focus them on the process. You focus them on executing the things that they can control. And ticking off these little check boxes and saying, I have done this this day, I have done this this week, can give a lot of positive emotions. And positive emotions is what, has, what pushes us forward. So really make sure that you highlight behavior goals, that you highlight them when your clients are executing them well. Because in this way, you can connect positive outcomes with positive behaviors. And that's the key to keep them going, even when the scale or some progress indicators are not doing, are not looking very, very good for the moment, because they can still focus on their behaviors and they still feel positive about making these changes. Making these changes because you make it a positive experience. So that's really, really important. Make sure that you're giving lots of specific positive feedback so they know reaching a behavior goal is a sign of progress. It's a non-scale way of making progress, of making changes in their life. And then you connect these behaviors with the outcome that they want to reach. What are some of the first signs that a nutrition program is working? Well, the first part could be your clients feel satisfied. When they have been yo-yo dieting and having, have done crash diets and they starved themselves and then they binged, when they suddenly feel just satisfied. They're eating enough, so they're not craving foods um, or a second helping. They just feel good about themselves. Not hungry and not super full, just satisfied. That's often already a great progress because they're making changes, they're eating less, but they're giving their bodies everything that they need. The next part is more energy. So when they wake up and they suddenly notice, oh, where does the, all the energy come from? That's a great sign of progress that their nutrition program makes changes in a positive way. They often then feel they have better sleep. They are using less caffeine or ways to stimulate and keep, keep them awake. So they may fall asleep earlier in the day. They, don't, they are not awake as long, but they feel more well rested at the end of the day. So next morning. And overall, often you notice they notice a better mood. So they are not as lethargic anymore. They're just they have energy, they are in a good mood, they want to get out there, they feel in control, they feel confident, and they have a better outlook on life. So if you notice these things, if your client notices this, maybe they're just saying it in a sentence, but they don't really highlight it then you can make a point of, hey, that's awesome. See, we already noticed something is changing. And this is especially important when you have clients who want to see really, really fast results because they're anxious. You can say, hey, the scale may have not moved yet, but you see all these positive changes and everything is pointing towards progress. So we just need a little bit more time. And I've emphasized this before, 
make a point of seeking these positive changes, changes and signal progress to your clients. This is really your job as a coach. You have to be on the lookout, scan everything. Oh, here's a positive, here's a positive sign, here's a positive sign, here's a positive sign, and highlight it to the client. Because then they cannot say, well, I'm not making progress. Because you are giving them evidence all the time, this is making progress, this is making progress, this is making progress. So how can you measure these signs? For example, what I like to do is I have a lot of these first signs on my intake questionnaire. And it could look like this, for example, how satisfied are you with your meals? Or you can say something like, overall, how satisfied are you after your meals? During the intake questionnaire, they can say, well, not satisfied at all, very satisfied, something in between, between 1 and 10. And then two weeks into the program, four weeks into the program, six weeks into the program, you can reassess this and see, oh, how does it change? And it's an incredible way to then discuss this. You can also add these questions into the check-in form and then reassess with every coaching um, in every coaching session and highlight any differences. And if you want to know how to keep track uh, of your clients, I have a video in the description and a check-in form that you can edit and send to your clients is also part of my coaching preparation kit. Now, how can we create our own non-scale measure? Because as we will discuss in a minute, making it specific to the client making it meaningful to them is the key. So they are looking themselves for signs of progress. So how can we start? We start with the overall goal. Okay, weight loss. What does weight loss really mean? Okay, five kilos. Let's get a little bit more specific. What is it really that you want? Why is weight loss important to you? And they may come up with something like, oh, I want to feel more toned. I want to feel healthier, I want to feel more confident. Okay, then we can focus for the moment, for example, on confidence. How would you know that you are more confident? Tell me, what are the signs? And they may say like, oh, I have more confidence, I feel better about myself when I'm presenting to others. Or it may mean my clothes fit better. Or it may mean I actually feel okay changing clothes in front of my partner. So we try to make it specific. And then we can often turn to these ideas of a scale. Okay, let's focus, for example, on you feel more confident presenting in front of others. Where are you right now? On a scale from one not confident at all to... I can't wait to stand in front of others and present again. Where are you? And they may say, okay, I'm a five or a four. So you have a base level. And the next time, while you have been working on their nutrition, you can check in and say, hey, how is this, this progress thing working for you? How, is your, how has your confidence been standing in front of other people? And they may say, oh, yeah, um, Lately, lately, since I've been active more, since I've focused on my nutrition, I know I can change things, I'm at a 7. And then you can send them a big high five and you can squeeze out all the juicy information. Oh, what has it been that made these changes? Oh, exercising is really important to feel more confident. Hmm, maybe we should do more of that. So being consistent with your nutrition intake, feeling good about what you eat is important to feel more confident in front of others. Hmm, maybe we should do more of that too. And in this way, you can grab important information from your client and highlight it to them and notice, oh, what you're doing reaches your goal. So let's do more of that to reach your goal. This is how you can build these processes, these non-scale measures, and how you can implement them into your coaching practice. And then you have always the important part of, okay, 
Now I have observed a change in my scale. What do I do with this information? And maybe it means, hey, let's do more of this exercise thing or this nutrition thing. Maybe it's sleep. Maybe it's just de-stressing after work. And now this little scale gives you a lot of information of where to go and what is your next decision. So if you want to play a little game, leave a comment under this video with a vague idea in how you could break it down into something measurable. And also, you can download this worksheet as part of my coaching preparation kit and the link is in the description below. Let's talk about some additional signs that their nutrition program is working for them. Another sign is that they are thinking more clearly, they have less brain fog, they are maybe more creative. They just have this sense of, well, something has changed, I can focus better. I have better ideas. Another part is they feel less deprived. So often when you're doing these crash diets, you have this experience of I have to give everything up just to reach this goal. And I actually just count the days until I can finally eat chocolate again because I'm in the super restrictive diet. So if they feel less of that, and it's more like a lifestyle, something that they can do for a long time, that's a great sign, not only for progress, but also that the intensity of the program, the difficulty of the program, is just right so they can continue with it for a long time, and that's our goal. Another part is better digestion. So when people eat a lot of processed foods, it can mess up with their digestion. So having better digestion having better di digestion blue. having better digestion is a way to notice oh the nutrition program is working and then sometimes people notice it or don't notice it is better skin they see oh there's they are my skin is cleaner it's less fatty it's i have a little glow whatever it is it can be a great sign and for some people very very important to notice oh this nutrition program really has an effect here's another important way of how to measure progress and it's about their mindset so clients often come in with an all or nothing mindset i have to remove all carbs from my life or i have to train six times a week or they have this if it doesn't work immediately i'm screwed and i give up so they don't have a growth mindset or they feel frustrated and then just give up instead of trying again, bouncing back stronger. And you can focus on some of these difficult thoughts and do the same thing on a scale from 1 to 10. How bad or where are you on the scale from 1 being 100% all or nothing, there's nothing else, to oh, I'm living the spectrum. Every 1% change is important for me. And in this way, you can also highlight internal thought process of, hey, I'm thinking about problems differently. I'm approaching difficult tasks differently. I'm less frustrated and easier able to bounce back. So this is another way of how you can measure progress without a scale that often can be critical to the progress because if we are able to teach our clients hey this uncomfortable feeling right now actually means progress and when I'm hitting a wall I'm coming back stronger these are so important skills not only for nutrition but overall for their lives so keeping track of these changes can be very very powerful additional ways to measure progress close fit better and often it's very nice when they can get closet sh shopping. So they go into their closets and notice, oh, this jeans that I haven't wear. They go into the closet, they take out the jeans. Oh, I've bought this jeans two years ago and now it fits again. This is incredible progress. You can take body measurements, circumferences of the arm, of the shoulders, of the chest. You can also take progress pictures and very often 
clients feel like, ah, it's not really working. And then you're taking a picture and you notice, oh, this is smaller, this is smaller. There are more details. There are little cuts coming through. This is another way of making sure that you notice and assess progress without using a scale. And then gym progress. And by gym, I mean really any kind of purposeful movement. So their cl your clients have just more energy, more strength, more endurance in the gym. They just have more fun at because the weights just move a little bit easier or their sport is a little bit easier. They're running a little bit faster. Another great progress indicator are new PRs, maybe all-time PRs. Longer, t more, longer running time, less running time, depending on the sport. More weight on the bar, more reps. It just feels easier overall. These are great signs that your nutrition program is really working for them. Another way is they have less pain, maybe from soreness or just joint pain. Maybe the joint pain goes completely or it just lasts a lot shorter. And they notice better recovery. So they're not sore for three days anymore. So they're just a tiny bit sore the next day. These all are progress indicators that you can watch out, notice and highlight. And the client knows how. Oh, yes, I've noticed that, but it really does make a difference. And imagine just for a second, a client sitting in front of you realizing, huh, what we are doing really makes a difference. What a powerful moment that is. And you have the control over it. You can look for these signs and highlight these to your clients. I mentioned this a couple of slides ago. The key is not just trying to, to measure everything. The key is to make it personal. When they have their own specific measurement, when they know this is what I'm looking after, this is how I know that I'm making progress with my confidence. Then changes are so much more meaningful. Assessing this makes is, a, is so much more meaningful. And the discussion of how can we move it forward comes so much more from the client because they're very much invested in this because they know Making progress on this scale means I am reaching what I really, really want. So go back to the worksheet, go through it with your clients, add it to their client check-ins, and you, in a few steps, individualize your coaching process so much more and you're able to write nutrition programs that are so much more individualized and personalized to the client. I'll make this brief, but it's important. It's easy to take a lot of measurements because it feels sophisticated, it feels clever, it feels comprehensive. But if you have a lot of measurements, you have to think through all of them and have to decide, what do I do with that? And if I have a lot of meaningless measurements, I'm just doing work because I'm not actually have, have the coaching process oh a change in this scale means i have to do this so fewer measurements are the key but they have to be more meaningful you have to know a change in this scale means we are doing this that's the key every scale gives you important information that informs your coaching decision and here is a worksheet that you can download in the coaching preparation kit that gives you an idea of how a non-scale win worksheet could look like. The key here is, and I want to remind you, it's not just to copy this and hand it out to your clients because it's not meaningful. Create something of your own, maybe create it for the client. You can add it to the coaching check-in that you can download with my coaching preparation kit. Make it meaningful. Maybe one, two, or three are more than enough. But here's a worksheet that you can pull out, maybe in a first conversation, and that just get an idea for your coaching intake. Oh, this is where we are in the beginning. Or maybe you can use it as a reference sheet when you're having coaching conversations. So the key is make this personal. 
make these scales individual to the client, but this is how they could look like. And one more important part here is change invites conversations. So when you notice a change in one of these scales, ask your client, what has happened here? What is different? Tell me about it. Because it either can signal a red flag, knowing, oh, we have to pay attention to something here, or it can highlight a bright spot. And they tell you, oh, I've done this, I've done this, this has changed. And you can learn a lot of clues, even by small changes on these scales, to see, oh, this is working, this is not working, how can we improve the process? So when you have these coaching conversations and these online check-ins, you can go through this, you can highlight the bright spots, you can talk about what is not going well, and then have specific clues of what to do more. Thank you so much for watching. I've added a couple of videos that could be of interest for you. How to write a nutrition coaching program, how to do online coaching check-ins, and also how to keep track of your clients.